Happy Sabbath. How's everybody doing? Good. All praises, all praises. Finally made it here to another Sabbath. All, all praises praise to the Most High. Good, good. So today we're going to go over class. Uh, the title of the class is going to be Don't Worry. All right. I am Officer Elida, for those who don't know. Uh, my reader. Officer Aaron. All praises. So we're going to go through some precepts. Um, uh, you know, basic understanding how, you know, a lot of us, when we come into this truth, brothers and sisters um, that are new to the faith, that are new to the truth, you know, a lot of us may get shaken up on things that may occur, you know, and we're going to go through some of these things and, you know, Lord's will, by the end of the class, you know, the, the spirit of fear, the spirit of worry could, uh, could flee from all of us, you know what I'm saying? So let's begin in uh, Sirach chapter 2. Uh, verse 1. Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Read it again. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So when we come to serve the Lord, meaning that we come to obey the Most High, we come to obey him, the things that he tells us to do, which is documented in the Bible. Okay, we have to prepare our minds for temptation. Because once we come into the truth, that's when Satan is going to try to tempt us the most. You know, everything's good when we're in the world, you know what I'm saying? Because we're actually, we're actually serving the devil when we're in the world. So now that we come in here, we have to prepare our minds for the temptation that is going to come when we choose to serve the Lord. Okay, read on. Set thy heart aright. Set thy heart aright. I want to hammer in on this right here because us setting our heart aright, meaning that we have to set our minds aright. Our minds now have to be focused on what the Most High says, which is documented, documented in the Bible. Okay? So let's go to Romans chapter 13 and verse 12. All right? Let's get some understanding on setting our heart aright. Romans 13 and 12. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. So it says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Okay? This is part of serving the Lord, obeying the Lord. Because when we choose to serve the Lord and we choose to obey Him, we also going to make the choice to cast off the works of darkness, which is sin. Read on. And let us put on the armor of light. And let us put on the armor of light. Meaning, let us put the commandments on. Let us apply the commandments in our daily lives. So this is one of the steps of setting our hearts aright. When we set our hearts aright, we cast away the works of darkness. And we put on the armor of light. Which is the keeping of God's commandments. Applying it in our daily lives. Alright? So from there, go back to... Uh, Let's go to, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Still dealing with uh, setting our heart, all right. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, let's start at, let's see. Let's start at verse 7. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So Paul said there was given unto him a thorn in the flesh. By show of hands, brothers, who can raise their hand and tell me what was uh, Paul's thorn that he had in his flesh? Uh, br uh, Brother Chris. Stand up, yeah. Um, the thorn in the flesh that Paul had was a uh, Salome leadership. Shalom, most high um, um, Was that he didn't have a wife, so uh, that was one of the major things that he was dealing with. In the flesh. So what? What would we call that? Uh, Start, like starts four. with an L. It starts with a what? Starts with an L. Let an L. Out. Lust. Very good. Very good. That was Paul's thorn in the flesh. Okay. All of us here have a thorn in the flesh that you know, because re repentance is a daily process. Repentance is a. Uh, we're we're going to be always um, having a thorn sure, in the sure. flesh even up until Christ returns. Okay. There's always something that. Um, we're going to be battling with. And we're going to read on. Paul's going to explain. So we got a thorn in the flesh. Go ahead. 
The messenger of Satan to buffet me. The messenger of Satan to buffet him, meaning to beat him. Go ahead. Lest I should be exalted above measure. So Paul wouldn't get high-minded. The same thing with us. We always gonna have that thorn in the flesh. So therefore, we don't. At the end of the day, we don't think that we got it all under control. You know what I'm saying? Because, like m many of us, you know, we'll we'll quit smoking cigarettes. We'll quit smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? And then we think we got it all under control that Satan can't touch you no more. But it doesn't work that way because now Satan is going to try another avenue to try to penetrate through your soul to also get you to turn away from the Most High, if that makes sense. All right. So that's why we all have a thorn in our flesh so that we won't get high minded and say that we got it all under control where now we turn away from the Most High and we feel like we don't need him no more. All right. Read uh, verse eight. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Go ahead. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. So now Christ came to Paul and he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So when Christ told Paul this, he said that, you know what? It's our reasonable service to keep the laws of the Most High. You know, because we have grace bestowed upon us that we don't even deserve. Okay. From there, I want to um, go to Job 35. I want to touch on something on how, uh, how the grace of the Most High is sufficient for all of us, meaning that we ought to be satisfied with the mercy that he has shown upon us. All right, let me get Job 35. Uh, start at verse 1. Hang on, let me get there with you. All right, go ahead. Job chapter 35, verse 1. The book of Job chapter 35 and verse 1. Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right? So it said, Thinkest thou this to be right? Do you think that this is right on what I'm about to say? Go ahead. That thou saidest, My righteousness is more than God's. So if we think that it's a right thing to say that our righteousness is more than God's, that means that we're pretty much telling the Most High in Christ that His grace is not sufficient for us. You know what I'm saying? It's telling, it's telling the Most High that our righteousness exceeds Him, meaning that our thoughts are going to exceed His. But that's not the case. Go ahead. For thou saidest, what advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I make if I be cleansed from my sin? So pretty much what he's saying is, how is the Most High going to help us? What profit shall that be if I be cleansed from my sin? You know, like how is the Most High... Uh, what reward can the Most High give me for keeping his commandments? Read on. I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Read. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold, the clouds which are higher than thou. So we have to look into the heavens, the clouds, the things that the Most High created, and see, be, read that, and behold what? And behold, the clouds which are higher than thou. So we understand that the Most High's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. All right? Go ahead. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? So if we sin, if we break God's commandments, it says, what doest thou against him? So it's like we saying, okay, I'm mad at you, God, so I'm gonna get, I'm, we're going to get God back by breaking his commandments. That's what that's saying. Read that again. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? So what are we doing to the Most High except putting our lives in jeopardy we're not really doing nothing to the Most High by us sinning. Go ahead. Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? So that's the question that's being posed. What, how are we paying the Most High back by breaking his commandments? We're, abs we're absolutely doing nothing to him. You know, we're, we're, we're like a fly on the wall. Read on. If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? So if we be righteous, now this is going into how our grace is sufficient for us. If we be righteous, what givest thou him? Like, what are we giving the Most High if we're righteous? Because that's supposed to be our reasonable service. You know what I'm saying? For example, like, you know, a brother that's working, taking care of his family. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do. You know, a lot of brothers think that, oh, they're they expecting a thank you, like, 24-7, or, or a trophy for it, for putting food in their refrigerator. They think that they should receive a cookie or a trophy for paying the rent that month. You know what I'm saying? We're not supposed to have that mentality. Read that again, verse seven. 
Verse 7, if thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? So this is why we ought to appreciate the grace that is sufficient for us. Because the Most High is not getting any reward by us keeping his commandments. The ones who are getting a reward for keeping the commandments is us. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that we can give the Most High but accept our reasonable service. All right? From there, let's go back to uh, Corinthians. Uh, chapter 12, where I left off at, verse 9. Yes, sir. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What brother can explain that part right there? My strength is made perfect in weakness. Who can explain that? Show of hands. It says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Brother right there. What's your name? Nige. Nige? Yeah. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Um, I would say that it's, it's at your weakest is when you know when you have to be strong. Like, um, when you don't have no money, that's really when you understand how to save your money. Good example. Let me hear somebody else. Now, uh, Brother Gerard. Shalom. Uh, I say it's, uh, it's like going back into the uh, least, least I exalt myself above measures. Because uh, once, once you realize it's, you have weakness, mm -hmm. it, it pretty much uh, gives you strength because it's, it's still more fight that you have to put in. Very good, very good. That's why Paul said a messenger of Satan was left there that he should not be exalted to buffet him. So now his strength, and we get the strength through the scriptures, is made perfect in his weaknesses, meaning that he was able to overcome his weakness. All right, that makes sense? All right, continue. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So this is how, you, and you know, not, remember the topic of the class is don't worry, all right? So when we have that in our minds that um, the Most High has mercy on us, that, you know, when we're over to come our battles, that increases our faith, you know what I'm saying? And when our faith is increased, that is more or less that we worry when trials and tribulation, trials and tribulation. We're coming into, now we're learning how Christ really operates. You know, now we're learning who Christ actually died for. Now we're learning who salvation is for. Now we're learning what Christ actually looks like. You know what I'm saying? So the things that we counted laws, you know, maybe we, maybe we enjoyed going to the Sunday church. Maybe we enjoyed celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, uh, a, a time when the family gets together. So many of us, you know, we would miss that, you know? But Paul said, I count all these things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? That what I have not been taught all my life, now I'm learning for the first time. Read on. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And that's what, we, we suffer the loss of all things so we can be accepted in the eyesight of God. So we can be accepted in the eyesight of Christ. So we put away Christmas, we put away Mother's Day and all these holidays that we used to celebrate. We put away going shopping on the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? We put all those things away. You know what I'm saying? We, now we, we, we sacrifice you know, our time. Real quick, um, we, we actually gonna lose, sacrifice our sleep as well. Oh, sidebar real quick, get Jeremiah 44 and four, real quick. Because this is one of the things because you know, a lot of us, you know, we like to sleep in on Saturday. You know what I'm saying? But let's see what the prophet Jeremiah said. Uh, Jeremiah 44, verse 4. It's another thing we count loss of. We count loss of sleep. We don't get as much sleep as we really want because we got to do the work of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Sisters don't get as much sleep as they once did because now, you know, they got to prepare the food. They got to make sure that the, uh, the, the men have food, the men have drinks, beverages, so on and so forth. So we count loss of sleep as well. And Jeremiah is going to explain that. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44 and verse 4. How be it, I send unto you 
all my servants, the prophets, rising early. Doing what? Rising early. Rising early. There's times when brothers got to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday to make it here on time. There's times when we leave out to camp, everybody got to be at the school by 6.30 in the morning because we are, the campsite is three hours away. You know what I'm saying? So this is a sacrifice that we do for now that we're coming in into the, the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So we count those things lost, the loss of sleep, and everything that pertains to... Um, you know, what we used to enjoy, now we, you know, put our focus on how we're going to please the most high, how we're going to please the body, how we're going to benefit the body, benefit our people that are out there without the knowledge of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So read that from the top. How be it, I send unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. And that's what we do when we go out and teach our people. You know, we, we tell them the, the things that God hates. We tell them the, the things that they should not be eating. You know, pork, crab, shrimp, lobster, our, our women wearing pants. You know what I'm saying? We tell, we tell them and warn them that, yo, God hates this thing. Don't do it. If you continue to do it, there's going to be a penalty. You know what I'm saying? We warn them over and over again. So we rise up early to do this stuff. We rise up early. We don't get a chance to sleep late on the Sabbath like we used to. You know what I'm saying? We got to be here at a certain time because the people are out there waiting to hear this word. All right? Go back to uh, Philippians. Hey, let, me, let me touch that. Go to Isaiah 62 and 1 real quick. Going into the rest issue. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about that. Because a lot of you brothers, like uh, the officers bringing out, the Sabbath day to y'all, you wake up, 12 o'clock, get some breakfast, chill out. That's not, that's not real. Understand, that's not real. The Sabbath day is a work day for the prophets. It's a work day of the Lord. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62 and verse 1. Uh-huh. For Zion's sake. For what? For Zion's sake. For Zion's sake. The nation of Israel's sake. Read. Will I not hold my peace? Will I not hold my peace? And like he was going into, that comes into many different shapes, forms, and fashions. All right? Uh, one way, uh, like Cap, he does the radio show every week. But before he does the radio show, sometimes the brothers have to set it up throughout the week. Uh, everybody has their different office. Then once we get the radio show, now we got to figure out what time it is. Then we got to go to the media man to figure out, hey, can you create an ad so the people can know what time to tune into the show? So there's, there's no peace in this thing as far as the work that we're doing to spread the gospel, to wake up Zion, the nation of Israel. Read it again from the top. For Zion's sake, uh -huh. will I not hold my peace? Read. And for Jerusalem's sake, and for what? For Jerusalem's sake, read. I will not rest. I will not rest. So that's the mindset we gotta have in this truth. In the world, people understood. They understand that you have to sacrifice something to gain something. Fifty Cent said, "Get rich or die trying." He was willing to put his life on the line for his personal gain. Christ and the Most High, the prophets in the past, they understood that the same way. That's the mindset we gotta have. Pushing this truth. Do y'all understand that? Do you sisters understand that? Ah, got low on that side. Alright, so we gotta we gotta get to that. We gotta get to that mindset. That's all I want. Excellent, excellent officer. Uh alright, go back to Philippians 3 and 8. The book of Philippians, chapter 3 and verse 8. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. Counts them as what? But dung. So Paul said he counts those things as feces, things that get flushed down the toilet, okay? Those things that we used to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? The family members that we used to hang out with, you know? They was, it was pleasurable for a moment, but now that we're coming in, now that we're gaining new family members, we're gaining new mothers, new sisters, new brothers, new fathers, you know what I'm saying? Paul said those things are like dumb because you know what? They weren't, they weren't as valuable as I thought they were once we come into the understanding on who we are and what we must do and the way we're really supposed to live our lives, all right? Uh, uh, read, read on. That I may win Christ. That I may win Christ because that's why 
you know, but that's the, our reward. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we're doing all of this to receive the eternal reward, which is rulership on this earth that was once taken away from us. So we're trying to get that back. All praises. Uh, from there, go to, um, uh, what was I? Take, uh, all right, go back to Sirach. Sirach chapter two, uh, read verse four. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter two and verse four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So still dealing with the cheerfully part, all right? Let's see, let's see out of Christ's mouth on, he, on how he told us the same thing to whatever is brought upon us, take cheerfully. Get John 16, 33. John 16, 33, because Christ said the same thing. And we, we know that Paul said, be ye followers of me, as also I am of Christ, all right? So, uh, John 16, 33. The book of John, chapter 16 and verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. So that's the same thing that Paul said. You know what I'm saying? I might win in Christ, in me, and when once we uh, change our ways, you know, examine ourselves, we'll have peace in Christ as well. Go ahead. In the world... Ye shall have tribulation. In the world, we're going to have tribulation. You know what I'm saying? That's something that's normal for us. It, it's, not, it's not if we're going to have tribulation. The question is, when is the tribulation going to come? You know what I'm saying? That's why we all, our loins always have to stay girded up in these scriptures. Because, you know, as the scripture says, faith come with hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's going to increase our faith. When we go through the various examples of our foremothers and our forefathers, that's going to increase our faith so we can continue to constantly endure and continue to cheerfully whatever is brought upon us, whether it be in our favor or not in our favor. All right? Read on. But be of good cheer. But what? Be of good cheer. But be of good cheer. This is the same thing Sirach was saying, all right? Whatever is brought upon thee, the tribulations, Christ is saying the same thing. The tribulations be of good cheer because they happen for a reason, all right? Read on. I have overcome the world. And that's the same thing that we're trying to get our people to do. We're trying to get our people to overcome the world of Satan, to overcome the world of America. You know what I'm saying? Because now we know the same thing that Paul said, those things that he counted for loss, he counted them as dung. He counted them as stuff that wasn't uh, valuable to him. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we overcome the world, by going through the tribulations and being of good cheer. You know what I'm saying? From there, go back to uh, Sirach. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. All right, go, go to uh, Sirach 39 and 16. Ecclesiasticus 39 and 16. Still dealing with the topic of taking cheerfully and whatever's brought upon thee, be patient. I'm still on that topic. Uh, Sirach 39, what I said, 16? Yes, sir. All right, yeah, read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 16. All the works of the Lord are exceeding good. So all the works of the Most High is exceeding good. Everything that he does, all right? All of his thoughts, all of his actions, all of his ways are good. Go ahead. And whatsoever he commanded shall be accomplished in due season. So whatever the Most High wants to do, when he wants to do it, is going to get accomplished. Like I said before, whether it works in our favor or whether it doesn't work in our favor, we know that the Most High has his reasons for it, and he's doing it for a reason to make sure that we can be acceptable in his eyesight, making sure that we can be uh, made that perfect man, that perfect measure, that perfect woman in Christ. So he has his reasons for everything. Go ahead. I got something on that. Go to uh, Judith 8 and uh, start at 26. Start at 25, actually. That's an excellent scripture you just brought out. Uh, I like that scripture in Sirach. All the works of the Lord are exceeding good. All right? You got that? Judith 8, 25. The book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 25. Uh -huh. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Read. Which trieth us. Which what? Which trieth us. Read. Even as he did our fathers. Even as he did our fathers. That goes back to Romans 15 and 4. The things written aforetime were written for our learning. 
So if you go through the history, if we're all going to measure up to the full measure of Christ, you will understand this walk is only about trials and temptations because that's the life that Christ lived. Read. Remember what things he did to Abraham uh -huh. and how he tried Isaac. Read. And what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia. So, so she's going through, they're listing the examples of our forefathers and what happened to them. But if you're not reading, you don't know these examples. You don't have these examples to rely on. So you don't have that mindset of not worrying. But when you read through the Bible, when you see the thousands of years of history of the Most High not failing us over and over again, that will strengthen your faith. Read. When he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. Read. For he have not tried us in the fire uh -huh. as he did them. Right. So at the end of the day, we are not in an actual fire like Meshach, Matt Shadrach, and Abednego. We ain't in as bad of a situation as we think we are. Read. For the examination of their hearts, uh -huh. neither have he taken vengeance on us, uh -huh. but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him. You see that? So you, exactly what we've been reading the whole time. You take pride when the Most High is dealing with you. That's, that's a, a reward that you are going through trials. That lets you know that you are drawing nearer to Christ, nearer to the Father. Read that part again. But the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him. Why? To admonish them. You see that? To make you better. To correct you. Alright? Excellent. Excellent. So, just like the officer just said. Hold on. You got I was going to add on to what the officer uh, said right there. So, just go back real quick. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 10. This is the purpose of the admonish. Of the admonishing. Excuse me. The book of First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. So the Lord has called us to be Israel once again through the spirit of Christ. That's what it's saying right now, right now with us in here right now. Read. After that, ye have suffered a while. So we suffering. We're going to suffer a while. That's that tribulation. But this is the purpose of it. Read. Make you perfect. It does what? Make you perfect. Admonish you. It makes you what? Perfect. It makes you perfect. How? Because Christ said, be ye perfect even as my Father which is in heaven is perfect. So what you're going through, like the officer just said perfectly, take it with joy, with cheerfulness. Take it with gladness because it's to make you perfect. All praises the most I put it in your hands to go through a little bit of tribulation in this cardinal life we're dealing with. Because at the end of the day, it's going to make you perfect. It says, take what you have cheerfully. We got sisters and brothers right now going through things. And it's tribulations unto life or death right now. And you, how you know somebody's taking stuff cheerfully is when you see the words of God coming out of their mouth. And they still, they hasn't, they hasn't changed their spirit from the time when they wasn't going through the tribulation. They're the same way. Likewise with Job. Satan tempted Job because he tempted, he, the Most High said, have you not considered my prophet Job? How he's a perfect man who would skew of evil. He's not going to change whether I'm blessing him or not. That's how we got to be. We got to be tempered like that. I'm still going to be the same whether I have it or not, Lord. This is just how I am. This is my reasonable service. You understand that? So it's to make us work. Make you perfect. Uh-huh. Established. Meaning fully rooted and built. Established. You're not going to waver. You're not tossed to and fro. Read. Strengthen. Strengthen. You strong because when other people look at you that's going through things, they look at you as hope. You're strong. You're strengthened. Read on. Come on. Settle you. Settle you. That's the Lord doing it for us. Settling us. Making us feel comforted. Go back to what you had. Go ahead, officer. All right. All praises. So that's why, you know, whatever's brought upon us, we have to take cheerfully because, as the captain just said, it's to strengthen us. It's to prove us. To make sure, you know, as we're going to read the next verse that explains it, the gold being tried in the fire. All right, so let's go back to Sirach, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So I just want to deal real quick how, because another word for tried is to prove. So... Let's get Exodus chapter 20, verse 20, all right? Because this is one of the main reasons why 
the commandments because the commandments have been here from the beginning. We know that. But this is the main reason why the commandments had to be introduced to us again during the time of the Exodus, during the time of Moses. All right? This was a specific reason for uh, Exodus 20 and 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. So, Moses, read that again. Fear not. So he said, fear not. Okay, this is, Mo this is Moses speaking to the Israelites. He said, fear not. And that this is the, the title of today's class. Fear not, don't worry. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that ye, and that his fear may be before your faces. So that, that, go ahead, there's more. That ye sin not. So that's the whole purpose of the commandments being reintroduced to us again. To prove us. To prove us. To make sure that um, we purge out anything that we may have on us. So re what was that last part again? That ye sin not what? That ye sin not. So that's the whole purpose of us being proven us being tried in the fire so that we sin not. We can leave all from sin. You know what I'm saying? Because when, when we're in the midst of sin, that's when we should start worrying. You know what I'm saying? But if we're not in the midst of sin, if we're keeping the commandments to the best of our ability, that's when we have no reason to worry. But if you're in the midst of sin, committing willful sin, yeah, you got something to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I got something on that. Go to Matthew real quick, 6. I don't know if you're going to go there or not. Nah, go ahead. All right, Matthew 6. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. Because we keep the commandments in here. And a lot of times they deal with the sisters more so than the men. Most relationships at some point, you marry brothers, marry sisters, y'all y'all know. Money becomes an issue. All right? So, I'm going to read a scripture for you. Because the topic is don't worry. 90% of most worrying problems stem from financial issues. So let's see what God says about that. Matthew 6 and uh, 27. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 27. Uh-huh. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? So, by you thinking and meditating on an issue or a problem, how many, is that, how many of you all, you meditating on a problem, is that going to make your bank account change? No? All right. So... I'm not telling you don't go to work and sit there and just pray. And, no, I'm not telling you that. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times we spend too much woman, because the first thing when you come home, you hear something about finances. Your thoughts on these things are not going to change the problem. What will change it is trust in the Lord <laughs> with all that heart and lean what? Not until I own understand. Like Captain said earlier, a lot of times the most I got things working and you don't even understand it. But because you're stressing out, it'll lead you to do something crazy before you can, before he has the solution and it comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, what was I about to say? I was about to give another example. Oh yeah, myself, personally. Uh, also David can attest to this because we, we was together about four years in Tallahassee. But for some reason, as y'all know as adults, money comes and goes. But I don't stress it too much. And it's like every time when I'm almost on the last inch, I got seven dollars left. Something happens, like, oh, uh, this just came in, two thousand dollars. Like, it always happens like that, and I don't never stress. It. I know the Most High always will make a way. He always will make a way, and it, it's a Christian saying, but he might not come <laughs> when, when you want, him, but he always on time. That, and that's, that's the only thing in the Christian church that's true. That is a true saying. It ain't true. It's true. I'm just being real. So don't stress on that. Don't stress on that stuff. Don't worry about it. All right? Hey, all praises. You got some? Oh. Nah, I was going to tell him, don't be bringing that Christian spirit over here, man. <laughs> Alright, so let's go back to uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 5. Dealing with how the gold is tried in the fire. That's why the commandments were set in place to prove us. You know, so we could be made, we could be made perfect in the eyesight of God in Christ. All right, Sirach 2 and 5. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. All right, so from there, let's go to uh, dealing with the gold is tried in the fire. Let's get Isaiah chapter 1, verse 25. 
Um, over sanitized, you could pull up that definition I asked you for earlier. All right, so for gold being tried in the fire, you know what I'm saying? He, most High, put things in place to prove us, to see whether we're worthy of him. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, when, when most of our people, when everything's going good, you know, we don't acknowledge the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time, when we call upon the Most High, you know, when we was in the world, is for when something bad happens. You know what I'm saying? That not, not, too many, not too many people are gonna fast right after they get their income tax. You know what I'm saying? Bring it out. <laughs> so, let's get um, Isaiah 125 dealing with the gold being tried in the fire. Uh, hey, 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 you right about that. Yeah, 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 hold on. I gotta say something about that when you said nobody uh, fasting about the, after the income tax. Hold on. Go to Sirach chapter 11 and start at verse 24. All right, this is the mindset of most of our people. This is the mindset of most of our people. Read that. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 and verse 24. Uh-huh. Again, say not, I have enough uh -huh. and possess many things. Uh -huh. And what evil can come to me hereafter? Right, you just got your income tax. Now you got some money. Read. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. Right, when we receive blessings, we forget... We forget what happened when we were on low time. Read. And in the day of affliction. In the day of affliction, read. There is no more remembrance of prosperity. Right. That's our people. When we when we doing good, we forget about God. Then when we down low, we forgot when the most high blessed us in the first place to put us in that situation. That's why you gotta stay steady. You gotta stay steady. You don't you don't worry that like we read. You don't worry from this day to the next day. You don't worry. You know the most high got you. Either way. Wow, all praises, all praises. All right, so from there, go to Isaiah chapter one, verse 25, dealing with how the gold is tried in the fire. The, right. the book of Isaiah chapter one and verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross. And purely purge away thy dross. Let's get the definition of dross. It's not a word we use on a regular basis. Oh. Dross, the scum or unwanted material that forms on the surface of molten metal. So the definition of dross is the scum or unwanted material that forms on the surface of molten metal. So read 125 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross. So what is the dross, what is the unwanted material that the Most High is trying to purge out of us? Say it out loud. Very good, exactly. So this is the unwanted material that we're trying to purge away, or the Most High is trying to purge away out of us by proving us, by trying us, by putting these tribulations upon us. You know what I'm saying? To make us that, you know, perfect man to, where, where Christ said, be therefore perfect. As, as my Father in Heaven is perfect. All right, so read uh, 125 again. And I will take, turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tin. So, and we say it all the time about, you know, the analogy of the gold. You know what I'm saying? You gotta purify it, get out all the unwanted materials. So that's the, what uh, the Most High is doing with us. All the, uh, all the leaven that may be in us, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to purge it out of us. You know, make us go through these tribulations. Make us go through these trials. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, we can't worry. We can't be fearful when these things come upon us. Take it cheerfully and know that, you know, you're, being, you're, you're suffering for Christ's sake. When you have that mentality, that, that'll be the less that you worry about on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? All right, from there, go, to, go back to Sirach. Uh, actually, go to... Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9 and 7. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9 and verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them. So it says, I will melt them, meaning I'm going to refine them, okay? I'm going to make them pure again. Go ahead. And try them. And what? And try them. We read it over and over again how the Most High is always going to put us in a position where he's going to try us. He's going to prove us. And he's going to prove us through his commandments whether or not we're going to keep them. You know what I'm saying? He's going to prove he's going to prove us by putting us through 
trials and tribulations to see if we actually apply the commandments when we're faced with these hardships or trials and tribulations. Because we could remember the precept sheet, we could study the precept sheet, you know what I'm saying? But when the time comes when, you know, we could read Matthews 18, you know what I'm saying? But when the time comes for Matthews 18 to be applied, are we really going to apply it? You know what I'm saying? Are we going to be refined? It, and, and that's the way the Most High will try us, to make sure we'll, he'll put us in a position where we have no choice but to apply that specific commandment. And that's how he's going to try you to prove you to see if you're real or if you're fake. All right? From there, go back to, go back to Sirach. Um, let's read, start at verse 6. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 6. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. So that's what we read earlier. Set thy heart aright, order thy way aright, believe in the Most High, and he will help us. You know what I'm saying? That, and that, that's his promise to us, and we have to believe in that. We have to have faith in that. All right? Read on. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Now that's going back to make not haste in the time of trouble. Wait on his mercy, lest you fall. Because when you make haste in the time of trouble, what, what's going to happen? You're going to leave out the truth. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're going to have in your mind that, oh, nobody's going through what I'm going through. So let me just isolate myself. You know what I'm saying? And that's when Satan is really going to try to buffet you. You know? And that's when he gets you at your weak points when you're by yourself. You know, I, Officer Aaron said it uh, in one of his rhymes. It's Satan locating your isolation. <laughs> All right, so we got to be very mindful of that, all right? Uh, verse, verse 8. Verse 8. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. So it says, ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. So let's get some examples of what this reward is talking about. What is our reward? Reward for fearing the Lord. What is our reward for not making haste in the time of trouble? Okay, the Most High has it all set up for us. All right, let's uh, let's start it. Let's go back to First Corinthians uh, three fourteen. First Corinthians chapter three, verse fourteen. Hang on, let me get there with you. All right, First Corinthians three fourteen, dealing with our reward. The book of First Corinthians chapter three and verse fourteen. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Read it again. If any man's work abide. So if any man's work abide, if any man endures through whatever he may be going through. Okay, go ahead. Which he hath built thereupon. Because what we're trying to do is build the kingdom. We're trying to build a uh, the, on, on the solid rock, which is Christ, the foundation. We're trying to build on that by teaching our people, you know what I'm saying, who they are, their nationality, purging out the sins that, you know, some of us may be battling with. So that is the, um, the which he had built thereupon, you know? Read that from the top again. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. From there, Galatians 6 and 9. He shall receive a reward. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm lining it up because when uh, I get the last precept, it's going to tell you what the reward is. All right? But these are the things that um, we have to keep in mind and, you know, not worry, you know, especially if we're suffering or getting persecuted for doing the Lord's work. Okay? There's a reward for us and we got to keep that in mind. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. The book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not what? Be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in well-doing. Meaning like, don't, you know, don't overwhelm yourself and try to say, like, damn, what reward am I going to get for this? Like, okay, I'm doing all these flyer missions. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything that I can, you know. And a lot of people, they want instant gratitude. They want instant gratification. Like the example I gave about um, a man providing for his household. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get a pat on the back. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do, according to 1 Corinthians. If you can't provide for your own, you're worse than an infidel. So that's your reasonable service. You know what I'm saying? Or like you hear brothers, uh, 
or say something like, well, at least I'm not in jail. Well, you ain't supposed to be in jail. You know what I'm saying? So what do you want to pat, pat on the back for not being in jail? You ain't supposed to be there. You want to pat on the back for putting food in the fridge? You want to pat on the back for paying your rent? No. So it says, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in where you think you put too much work in for the Most High. Because we can never do enough for the Most High. It says, our righteousness is like an unfilthy rag. You know what I'm saying? So we always have to strive to see what availability there is. What needs to be done? What needs to get done? Who needs help? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, who, who needs a reader? So on and so forth. We always got to be... Um, assertive when it comes to these things, you know? Hey, officer, yeah. on, that, on that note, talking about who needs help. Alright, so overall he's talking about, don't worry, right? Little things, tribulations that we go through. So I'm talking to the, I'm talking to the body, but each of you all as individuals. What is the overall reason why we shouldn't worry about going through tribulations, losing a job, lose your phone when you break something, you lost money. Overall, why should we not Worry about the little things like that. Khalid, not not Khalid, but young brother in the back. Ruel. Is it Ruel? Let's see if the young man know. Shalom, leadership. Because of the scripture that we read earlier, Luke uh, 12, 22, dealing with he feeds the fowls. And they nope, hear. nope, nope, nope. His father. See if his father knows. Because uh, we're rich in Revelation 20. No, that's not it. Why each of us as a body, but individually, should we not worry about that stuff? I'm going to get you next, brother. After him, we'll get you next. Because we're in captivity. Nope. Let me get you next right here, right here, right in front of you. Gerard. Because it's temporal. Nope. I'm going to get three more. Three more. I'm going to give you the answer. Go, uh, Moses. Right behind you. Because we're supposed to be your brother's keeper? That's close. You're warm. You are very warm. You need to, you need to, you need to bring it home. Yakuba, then to the then to the, the left of you. Uh, Acts 4:32, we take care of each other. Exactly, because there's somebody going through something way worse than losing a job or getting made fun of for fringes. There's somebody in your family, in the body. That's going through something way worse than what you're going through for that little stuff. Why do we come to the Sabbath for? Why are we here? Azariah. Are we here to gather together and congregate? Nope. <laughs> Why are we here? Uh, I didn't get you right here to the left. Micaiah, right? That's your name? What are we coming to the Sabbath for? Shalom leadership. Um, to build each other up. To help each other grow in the spirit. Exactly. Go to Hebrews 10, 26. We got people in the body right now going through it right now. We don't need to be worrying about that little petty stuff. We had a brother, an officer die last week. That petty stuff that we be worrying about, that I be worrying about, when the loss of money or something, anything like that, lose your cell phone, you be going crazy, lose your cell phone, we be worried about little things. There's major stuff going on in the body that we need to be there for one another. Hebrews 10, 26. And before you read that, I'm gonna give y'all props because y'all are being there for somebody in the body right now. There's somebody in the body right now, she said the only reason why that she can make it through it, what she's doing right now, because her family in here is coming to see her and her husband. Her real family in the world has not come and see her husband. But you Israelites coming to see her, building her up. And she's strong as a rock right now. And the reason why, I'm saying this for new people, because some of y'all are doing it, y'all doing it. The reason why she's strong right now is because of y'all right here going to see her, going to visit her. 
Read that, read that scripture. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of... So we come in to congregate, yeah, of course, but... As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. That's what we're here for. Week after week, we come in to exhort one another. And we just come in, we just sit here, we exhort one another. What are we coming here for? Let's get, uh, let's go back to Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 9. Let's read that again. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. So let us not be weary in well-doing. We're helping each other out. You know what I'm saying? That's the example that the officer just gave. You know what I'm saying? Because we know that we're doing a deed. We're, we're helping out our brothers and our sisters. So let us not be weary of that. All right? Go ahead. For in due season, we shall reap. So in due season, we're going we're gonna to reap. We're going to receive our reward. You know what I'm saying? Because the Most High is coming back to judge every man to according to his righteousness or according to his unrighteousness. Either way, we're going to receive a judgment. Okay? Go ahead. If we faint not, if we faint not, if we continue to endure, we're going to reap the benefits that the Most High has promised to us. You know what I'm saying? Which is eternal life and rulership back on this earth. All right? So from there, go back to, uh, what I had you holding? Uh, still dealing with the reward. Go to uh, 2nd Ezra 2.35. I'm going to tie it in all together with, uh, with the reward aspect, aspect, then we'll move on. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. The book of Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Be what? Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. So it says, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. This is our reward. If we if we faint not, we continue to endure. If we're not, we're at the 42 and verse 10. Job 42 and 10. The book of Job, chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he was praying, when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, when we read the history of Job, we know that Job was uh, the most high tried Job. You know what I'm saying? That he was, he was afflicted, his kids got killed, so on and so forth. Job was a major example of one of our forefathers that went through the trials and the tribulations, all right? So, but it said in Sirach, uh, look at the generations of old. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? No, the answer is no, okay? Because when you trust in the Lord and you, uh, you, you keep the faith and you don't worry, the Most High ha will always have a reward for you, all right? Read that in Job again. The book of Job, chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So that was Job's reward for trusting in the Most High. You know what I'm saying? That, that was Job's reward for not making haste in the time of trouble. You know, Job, Job actually applied that commandment. You know, what the Most High had told him to do. So that was his reward. He got restored twice as much he had lost. All right? And that's what we're going to receive in the kingdom. You know, it says in Matthew, you know, we're going to receive, we're going to receive hundredfold. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be family members, things that we thought was valuable here on this earth, we're going to receive even double. And things that are even twice as much more valuable than what we could ever imagine. All right? So from there, go back to Sirach. Uh, verse 11. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in the time of affliction. So that's another thing we have to keep in mind. The Most High is full of compassion, all right? Full of compassion and what? And mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiven giveth of sins, and saveth in the time of affliction. So that's another reason why we shouldn't worry about the small things in life. You know what I'm saying? Whether or not a bill is going to get paid, you know what I'm saying? Whether or not if um, 
you know, sisters, you know, if you came into this truth and your husband don't want to follow, we, those are the things that we cannot worry about. Brothers that, you know, if, if, if their wives don't want to follow this truth, you want to fully dedicate your time to the Most High, you know, these are the things that we cannot, um, you know, worry about. You know what I'm saying? Read verse uh, 12. Verse 12. Woe be to fearful hearts. Woe be to fearful hearts. Now we know that woe means destruction. So let's just get a precept to prove that woe means destruction. Let's get Hosea chapter 7 verse 13. Because it says woe to be to be uh woe be to fearful hearts. Now we read that also in Revelation chapter 21. Alright, to so the fearful. You know, those are the ones fearful is also the ones who fall under the category of getting tossed into the lake of fire. That's why I'm saying woe to the fearful hearts. So what does woe mean? The book of Hosea, chapter 7 and verse 13. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Say woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Go ahead. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. So that's how we know that woe means destruction. Woe unto them, because they have fled from me. They, they, they made haste in the time of trouble, okay? They turned their face for me. They didn't want to constantly endure. They didn't want to take things cheerfully. Says that again, read it from the top. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Go ahead. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. So you can use that precept when somebody asks you uh, if woe means destruction. Hosea 7.13 proves to you that woe means destruction, all right? To those who are fearful, all right? To those who um, choose not to endure, make haste, don't want to go through the trials and tribulations, worry. Go back to Sirach. Uh, uh, verse 12. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 12. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. The sinner that goes two ways is that double-minded brother or sister. You know what I'm saying? Where he got one foot in, one foot out. Going in two ways, he's, he's lukewarm. He don't know whether he's hot, he don't know whether he's cold. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's for, you know, brothers that come in here, you know, you gotta always be willing to put your hand to the plow. Never be afraid to do the Lord's work. You know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, Captain Amaziah had brought out a good class uh, about going through the motions. You know, those brothers that are here continuously, two years, three years, and all they come here is sit here and don't try to put their brick in, that's the spirit of being lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta be mindful of that, and a lot of brothers don't wanna put their brick in because of fear, because of worrying what the consequences might be, and what somebody would say to them. You know what I'm saying? We gotta remove that spirit from us, that fearful, worrying spirit, all right? Go back to verse, uh, Go to 13 now. Hey, uh, I want to touch something. I don't know if you're going to hit it, but I want to go to the to the negative effects if you do worry. Were you going to hit that? Uh, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. All right, go to Sirach 30. Start at verse 21. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30 and verse 21. But the name of the class is do, Don't Worry. Don't Worry. There's a positive and there's a negative. This is the negative side of that. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Do what? Give not over thy mind to heaviness. So the Bible's telling you in the plainest words as it can, do not give your mind over to heaviness. Our terms, don't worry. Why? And afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. Right, just like we read in Matthew 6. Don't stress on things because you can't change the result. Read. The gladness of the heart is life of a man, uh -huh. and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Read. Love thine own soul. Read. And comfort thy heart. Uh -huh. Remove sorrow far from thee. Do what? Remove sorrow far from thee. Right, because that worrisome, fearful spirit leads to sorrow. Read. For sorrow hath killed many. For what? For sorrow hath killed many. Because that worrisome, sorrowful spirit has killed many. Read. And there is no profit therein. That's the key part. There's no what? No profit therein. There's no profit if you have that worrisome, fearful spirit. There's no profit. Read. 
Envy and wrath shorten the light. Uh -huh. And carefulness. And what? Carefulness. That's worry. Carefulness is worry. Read. Bringeth age before the time. You see that? That's why Esau looked the way they look. Because they be stressed out. Because they got to worry about where all their money at. That's why they say black don't crack. Because we ain't worrying about nothing. We ain't got too much to our name. So we don't, we don't stress too much. We, we know we live in check to check. All right? But that's what it says. It says, give not over thy mind to heaven. All right? All praise. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.